OK, in this final video tutorial, we will look and see how to calculate the percentage uncertainty and absolute uncertainty in the y-intercept. There's only one really learn one learning objective here, and it's quite simply again to get those uncertainties in the y-intercept using the lines of extreme fit, which were discussed back in tutorial 8a. Now, to this is the final tutorial. Again, it's based on calculating the uncertainty in the y-intercept, both absolute and percentage. But again, just to stress, make sure you have fully went through and understand the contents of tutorial 8a and b. Otherwise, this will not make sense to you. So if you haven't seen them yet, stop, go back, and then jump back in here again. Now, this video tutorial will pick up at the stage where both the extreme lines of best fit have been drawn, that is your max and your minimum. The format for determining the percentage on absolute uncertainty in the y-intercept is very similar to that of the gradient, as we'll see now very shortly. Again, you might want to pause the screen if you feel it's useful and copy down these respective notes. Now, again, let's assume that we've got to this sort of stage, which we discussed back in tutorial earlier today. So, you know, your graph is plotted, your plotting points, we've got the line of best fit. We've got both lines of extreme fit there, max and min, fully labeled, dashed and whatnot. And we're really going to continue on from here during this tutorial. I partly advise taking a new page, copy down these notes as well as the graph, and then we'll add a few extra steps, of course, now shortly uh, to carry out this tutorial. But look, the first thing we need to do to really all three lines is to extend all three lines until they intersect the y axis. You can see, of course, that your line of minimum gradient will end up giving you the max value C and the line of max gradient will end up giving you the, or the, the minimum value of C in terms of your y-intercept. Again, you might just want to pause the screen, continue your three lines to intersect the y-axis, like you can see in the graph on the slide here. I've added some values in there. Obviously, in a real exam, you'd have to start to scale off your axes. I've just put numbers in here. Look, and I advise you to use my numbers. So, of course, all the calculations I do in the following slides will make sense to you. So again, just pause the screen and add in those three intercept numbers on your graph as well, please. Right, you can see, of course, the wee graph has been moved to the top right hand corner here, so you could have visually it of what's really going on here. Now, the equation for a straight line is, of course, y equals mx plus c. And when x is equal to zero, y will equal c. And so the intercept on the y axis occurs at zero c. Now, the y value for the intercept from your choice of the line of minimum gradient will give you the maximum value of C, i.e. it will give you a value of C max. And you can see that value of C max in this graph is equal to 0 0.070, which you can see in the corresponding graph across the right hand side. Uh, the Y value for the intercept from the line of best fit will quite simply be C. And of course, C in this particular graph is equal to minus 0 0.074, which again, you can see on the intercept of the graph here, top right corner. Now, the Y value for the intercept from the choice of line of maximum gradient will in fact give us the minimum value of C, which I'm calling here C min. And C min you can see is equal to minus 0 0.182, as can be seen in the graph in the top right corner as well. Now, I advise again, take a new page, copy down even that graph in the respective notes as well, please. Now, we can go about calculating the absolute uncertainty in the y-intercept. And to get that value is quite simply plus or minus the value of C max minus C min divided by 2. If you sub in the two respective numbers divided by 2, you should end up getting an absolute uncertainty in the y-intercept of plus or minus 0 0.126. Of course, in a real life exam question, you would put the appropriate unit in there as well. We can now really express the y intercept value with the associated absolute uncertainty, which we can now say is equal to minus 0 0.074 plus or minus your 0 0.126 absolute uncertainty, which we've calculated up here. And again, definitely pause this, copy down the respective notes and make sure you fully understand the contents before we move on. Now, of course, we could then be asked to go on and work out the respective percentage uncertainty for a few extra bonus marks 
And again, a similar technique is used here as to the gradient of your graph. So to get the percentage uncertainty in the y-intercept is quite simply plus or minus the absolute uncertainty divided by your value of C times 100. You just put those respective numbers in then, so the absolute uncertainty is just going to be plus or minus, just bring in the number there, the magnitude, uh, divided by your value of C, which is again minus 0 0.074 times 100. And regardless of whether or not your calculator is giving you a positive or a negative number, the percentage uncertainty is plus or minus that number. In this case, 170.27%. Again, that's your percentage uncertainty, and that may be an uneasy two marks in your exam as well. Of course, we could now fully express the y-intercept value with the associated percentage uncertainty, which is minus 0.074. Don't forget you put the unit in there, plus or minus 170.27%. Definitely pause this and copy down this worked example as well, please. Now, look, we could, of course, use that shorter method, which I'd probably advise in the exam, given the fact, you know, time can be quite pressing, particularly for the A2 papers. So take a new page, copy down these notes, just copy down this graph where I've just kept in really my line of max gradient, and I've taken in the two appropriate values of C, the line of best fit, and C minimum, of course, which we discussed previously, which is minus 0 0.182. Now to calculate the absolute uncertainty for the shorthand math, that is quite simply plus or minus C minimum, take away the value C. And if you sub in the two respective numbers, we now get an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.108. Again, the stress, you would of course put units in there in an exam situation. We can now express the y-intercept value with the associated absolute uncertainty as being equal to the value of C plus or minus the absolute uncertainty we've just calculated there now. But again, just to stress, in an exam situation, you would put the respective units in for each value as well. Again, pause the screen and just copy down this more simplistic method for the single line of best fit. And lastly, to get the percentage uncertainty for this shorter math, that again, same technique, it's the absolute uncertainty divided by your value of C times 100. Just again, bring in the magnitude of the absolute uncertainty divided by your value of C times 100. Regardless of why your calculator is giving you a positive or negative number, it's going to be plus or minus that number, which works out to be 145.95%. That's your two marks in the exam. And again, we could now go about expressing the y-intercept value with the associated percentage uncertainty. That's your value of the y-intercept. Put in your unit, a plus or minus your percentage uncertainty as well. And again, you can now pause the screen and copy down this final worked example. And that concludes this learning objective, and that really concludes this video series. Hopefully you find some of the information we've covered, of course, useful. But again, do make sure you get through as many past papers as possible. Get through with the school teacher, your technicians and whatnot. Get as much experience as possible using the apparatus. And um, all the best for the future.